Alright, so now we're going to look at our little soldering project, which is this weevil eye. Obviously it's very punny, it's a weevil, which is a little bug. Okay. Evil, it's got red eyes. We're all very entertained by that. Okay, so this is just a little introductory kit designed you to get, get you to solder some stuff up and we get to see some components. The whole idea is that when it detects light, okay, so there's less light, then the weevil eyes will glow. So on our board here, we've got a few different components in our kit. Okay, we've got the weevil eye PCB, the printed circuit board, Okay, this thing on the outside. Ours looks more like this. Okay. Pretty similar. After that, we've got our red LEDs. Okay, these guys. Remember, LEDs are polarized. They have okay, a set orientation. You've got to get them round the right way. So you know that by the length of the legs or by the shape of the plastic part. You can see on the PCB here, the silk screen. Okay, the silk screen is like the printing, this white part. Okay, they've got a flat part. That's where the flat part of the LED has to be. We've got some resistors. Okay, two different values. So we've got a 47 kilo ohm resistor and two 220 ohm resistors. These two 220 ohm resistors are to limit the current for our LED so it doesn't explode. Exploding is bad. I have a transistor, so let's get rid of this stuff. Bring our transistor in. This guy, our transistor just lets us turn something on and off. In this case, the LEDs. Little electronic switch. It also does a whole bunch of other things. Okay, that's what's in amplifiers to make them louder. That's what's in your phone, in your computer. Okay, just a few billion of them to make your computer do all its smarts. Last one, oh, last one, that's far. Okay, we've got initial photo cell. This I don't actually think is a photo cell. I think the instructions are lying here. I think we'll find that this is a photo resistor. So it's resistance changes based on the amount of light that hits it. That's what's going to tell our transistor to turn on and off. The other two things are our battery holder, looks like this, and our battery, which goes in there, which I don't have one. Well, I do. I just, not here. You'll have a battery. I did buy some. So, make sure you've done your little soldering thing, soldered up a few of these guys. You want to do at least, oh, I don't know, that many. Okay, you want to do eight or so practice runs. Before you do this, you only get one of these. If you break it, it's broke. Too bad. So sad. Now, you have instructions. You have a video. Follow one and or both of them. First thing we're doing, locating the 47 kilo ohm resistor. So K for 1000 kilo. This is a reasonably high value resistor. Looks like this. We can tell which one's the 47 kilo ohm, even though ours doesn't look like the picture. In the picture, there's four bands. See, one, two, three, four different colors. Our one, oh, good luck seeing this. Oh, we might actually get it to focus. Somewhere. Okay, mm, our one, you can see we've actually got five bands. One, two, three, four, five. So we need to look at a resistor chart to work out what these all mean. Make sure we use the right resistor. If we get it wrong, our LEDs won't work. Nothing will work actually, because LEDs are the only thing. So our bands are spaced out, so it only makes sense one way. If you try and read it back, but it's, it's, you're not gonna get a number, okay? Because this band here is different. So I've got this up the wrong way. I know this just because I've done it a million times. Also, we know we want 47K, so four is yellow. Okay, so we're trying to line this up to be like this one. Okay, so we've got yellow first, four, then we've got some purple down here, seven, and black, zero, so 470. And then we have 
Oh, what color is that? Cool eyes. Then we have some red. Okay, so 470 red, so times 100, 470 times 100, add two zeros on the end, 47000. So this is what we have. We have yellow. Okay, well, four, seven, zero, times 100. Okay, put all that together, we get four, seven, zero, 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 four, seven, zero, 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 which is equal to 400, and, sorry, 47. Okay, our units are ohms. Now that last band, you may be wondering what that's there for. The very last one seems to not want to focus. We can't really tell the colors. Um, the color of that is brown, which means this one here, brown, it's within 1%. So plus minus 1% of that value. Okay, so it could really be, so 1% of this is take off two zeros, divide by 100. So it could be anywhere between four seven four seven zero okay or or four six five three zero ohms not really important okay resistors are normally pretty good these days they're all going to be around this otherwise it's really not going to matter okay your brown is the most common by far okay so first step get that guy Oh girl, I want to gender our resistors here. Fold our legs down. So we get a nice little U looking thing. Just like that. Now, locate where it goes. Sorry about the aeroplane, if you can hear that. Our board is conveniently marked pretty well. 47k goes straight in there. Our resistors don't have a polarity. You can't put them in the wrong way. They work either way. We slide it in. Might have to bend our wires a little bit more. So now we're over here. We slide it in. It's pretty much flush to the board. Slightly bend our legs outwards. Okay, so see, it might have bent inwards just because of bending and of pushing it in. Bend them outwards a bit, not all the way. Okay, just enough so that it stays in there. Now. We sit it upside down and solder those two. So, we'll get our next sheet. Oh, are we going to solder yet? Uh, we're going to put all our stuff in. So, ooh, what are we going to do? We are going to, you can either solder that one, okay, and then do the rest, or we can poke them all in and then move on. I'm going to get us to solve that. That follows the steps in number order. So we get our little board, get our soldering iron, just like in the last video. Make sure it's hot. Okay, make sure our tip is pretty clean. Wet it, so put a little bit of solder on the end. Want to get all these three things touching, soldering iron, leg, and PCB. Put our blob of solder on. All right, now, it's a great example because I've got a big, ugly, sticking out bit of solder. We don't want that. That is painful. That normally means there was too much solder, so maybe I didn't need to wet my iron. Okay, so holding down the board, I'm going to just put my iron on there and bring that blob up the leg. Okay, because I'm going to cut the leg off anyway, so it doesn't matter if it's got a bit of extra solder on it. Our other option is to clean our iron on our bit of brass wool so it doesn't have any solder on it, then that bit of solder will stick. Okay. So that's looking much better. Do the same to the other side, you know, flip it around. If you find you're running out of hands, it takes a bit to get used to, either get a friend to put their finger on here, it'd be really nice and don't burn them, or get a bit of masking tape, okay, something, doesn't have to be blue, mine just happens to be blue. Okay. Bit of tape, tape it down onto the table so that it won't wiggle around on you. 
and then you can solder that guy up. Alright, so can put that little bit of solder on. That's a more reasonable amount that time. So you can see stuck to the leg, spatter on the bottom and the top, so we've got a good joint. Alright, so we have just done this step, this step, this step, this step, this step. Now we've got to cut off our excess. Now, a few ways you can do that. They've got little snippers there. I've got these big ass nail pullers. I'm going to put them on. Okay, snip it off. And the same for the other one. Snip it off. Now, you notice we've still got a fair bit, oh, fair bit sticking out. I might have another go at snipping this one. Your board will be spiky on the back. Just don't stab yourself. Should be right. So, now we're going to go. What's next on our instructions? Are we are on page 7. It would be nice if I had a page 8. Here we go. Page 8. We've got our resistor, our transistor, and our photo cell. Our resistors, our transistors, our photo cell. I'm going to put them all in where they go. Now, resistors, they just go in the right spot. Now, notice here, steps highlighted with yellow warning, okay, and a triangle here, yellow warning triangle, highlighted in yellow over here, represent a polarized component. Make sure you put it in the right way. Flat side to the flat side, like this. Not like this, like this. Start with our resistors, because they're easy. Bend our legs down, poke them through the holes. In and in. Conveniently, these guys are both the same. Make sure you've checked the colors match what they should 220 ohm so we should be looking at two is red okay we've got red red black so straight away we know that's 220 then if we've got black again which we do then that's 220 times one which is still 220 so 220 ohms in in, flatten, flatten, okay, next, our transistor, pull our paper off, if you grab it by the metal parts, okay, you can just give it a wiggle and it will pop straight out, it's just masking tape holding it in, these big bits of tape, they come as a big reel, a couple of thousand of these transistors on them, so that a robot can automatically feed it through and pull them out. Now, I'll get that guy in. Okay. Now, same thing, I'm just going to bend the outside to out a little bit oh, so that we don't have that happen, so we don't have things falling out on me. Alright, so we're all good here. I'm going to solder those up, see how we go. Alright, so I just quickly soldered them up and cut them up, and you'll notice we have a problem. Right here, these two are touching each other. Okay, because I folded them out, they ended up touching each other. That means they're making a connection when they may not meant to be. And this one is sticking out an awful lot. Okay, obviously it just worked its way out when I was soldering. Look at that, way too high. So. This means we need to get them back in. Now we can just heat them up and pop this one through and hopefully that will line everything up. When we do this we need to be careful. Remembering 300 degrees is hot, hotter than hot glue. At least it's not as sticky I guess. So if we're going to heat them up I'm just applying a bit of pressure on this top resistor, poking it through. So you see I've poked it through a fair bit there but Fold it over a bit. Now we want to be careful we're not bending this too much, otherwise we could 
break all of that resistor off, not what we want. Okay, that's much better. I'm going to do the other side. Now I'm pushing the resistor okay, from the actual carbon part, which means it's not going to be as hot as the wire, because the whole wire will heat up to 300 degrees. Okay, you can see I just straightened that one up. So hopefully I can wiggle it down. Oh, doesn't look like it wants to. Alright, that's good enough. I folded it over. Not very good. Okay. Probably not good enough. We'll see how we go. Now, have we solved our problem over here? No, we have made it worse. Okay, let's get our soldering on in there and try and pull that leg off. Do some more snipping. Otherwise we have to do some desoldering, which is more painful than soldering. So we can either use some copper to actually suck because yeah, it wicks away the salt, the solder wants to go onto the copper. So we can use some copper to wick away the solder, or we can suck some off with a solder sucker, okay, which is just a little spring loaded tool which sucks up solder. I'm going to fix this up just by bending it. We'll come back. Alright, looks like I forgot the photo cell, so we need to put that one in now. Photo cell, again, what makes me think it's a photo resistor means it goes in either way. Because resistors don't care which way they go. Yeah, get that in nice and flat. Just make sure it stays in so we don't have to fight with it like I did with our resistor. When we solder, it's important that we have a hot iron and that we pull our solder away pretty quickly. Okay, you don't want to be holding the solder on there for longer than we need to. Okay, otherwise we end up with those big spiky parts. Now, melt in my solder, put in my board, slide my iron away. But again, bring the iron away pretty quick. So that gives us all oh, that and if we look at it and we go, oh, I'm not sure about that solder joint. Yeah, look at that one, it's a bit blobby, not volcano-y. Take a little minute to cool the component down because we don't want to cook whatever we're soldering on. And then give it a quick little touch up. Okay, so hit it, heat it up. Slide away again. I look at it. That looks much better. All right, so now we're just going to do our LEDs. Okay, key here is to make sure we get them in the right way. So you need to really look at the LED from the bottom to find that flat side. You can just see, okay, away from my fingers there, we've got our flat side. That flat side is also a short leg. So a short leg, okay, which is our flat side which is our cathode or the negative side. Okay, on our little picture of our, or diagram of our LED, we've got our diode. Sorry about my drawing, I'm trying to draw looking at a screen here. Okay, plus I suck at drawing to start with. Okay, so we've got a diode. Now we've got our negative side here, our positive side here. Okay. So we can flow through this way. Whoop, that's not a line. So we can flow through this way, but we can't go the other way. So this negative side is our cathode, which on our LED, if we draw our LED, it's going to look like this from a top view. So our flat side is our cathode which is our negative. Our other side, which this also has the short leg, it's 
one has a long leg. Okay. Our other side here is our anode. Anode. Except anode only has one N. Great spelling by me. Just that positive side, just that long leg, which is the curvy side. So, point is, follow the picture on the board, flat side to the flat side. Flat side is also the short leg, if you have trouble finding it. The reason we got the flat side is obviously once you cut the legs off, you still need to be able to work out which way is which. Okay, pushed in, little bend. Sound effects are optional. Solder them on. I'm going to do this and solder on the battery connector, and that'll be us just done. Only thing to look out for is our battery connector has to go around the right way. Okay. So, right way is sticky addy part up at the top near the eyeballs. You just slide through on the back through the holes. Clip on, oh, up this way. Clip on, solder on the top side. Now, as is often the case when we're soldering things, you need somewhere more than two hands. So I'm using some tape again just to hold that battery connector in because you've got to have that little bit of metal poking up into that hole. Now, it's still only just level with the hole, so I really have to be careful to make sure that I get solder on that little tab in there. There we go. That should be good. Now, it's pretty hard. Oh, looks like my recording's frozen. There we go. It's pretty hard to tell whether we've done a good job or not when it's so little and so flat. Sometimes we can look down from the other side and see. This time the plastic's sort of in the way. So we're going to check this out with a multimeter after I've done the other side. Alright, so I've soldered my other side in and popped my battery in. Now, we've got positive side up. Pretty hard to see. There we go. Positive side up. Which we can tell if I can get the battery out. Oh, you can see that it's working. We'll look at that a bit more. Ugh. I actually got a 2025 20, battery in here, not a 2032, which means it's a bit thinner. And obviously harder for me to get out. There we go. When we look at this, yeah, we've got a little positive marking on our silk screen at the top there between the two LEDs. Maybe just see if I've got my finger. That goes through onto this tab. Okay. And this tab is touching the top of the battery. So these batteries separate positive and negative using this little black plastic ring on the bottom. So the bottom eight is the negative, the edge and the top are all positive. So this can touch the edge and the top and not cause any issues and this is touching the bottom. Yours should be a spring. Okay, I've just used the broken one so that you guys don't have to. Battery goes into the back, okay, back in first, then the top clips down under spring loaded part. Now we can see we've got our little right, all ready to go. When we cover up the photoresistor, oh look at that, the lights come on. Now we can see our transistor is actually working to control the current here, okay, in the mode that it's in. It's actually working sort of like an amplifier that when we change the amount of light we can actually get a half on state. You see this, so partially on. So that partially on is how we can use these as an amplifier. So they're not always just on, off, on, off. If they were on, off, on, off, we wouldn't be able to get nice sound out of our phones to our earphones or speakers, okay, or radios in our car, because everything would either be on or off, like a buzzer, not a speaker. Can get those movements in between. So cover up again. Nice bright lights, partially we can get some, okay, and they're bright, we're getting nothing. Battery will go flat on these eventually, it's not going to use much power when it's like this, 
it when the lights aren't on. However, if you want it to last, you still want to pop that battery out by pushing the little metal tab in, and the battery should you utilize the gravity. Should be able to get it to <laughs> should be the key word here. Get it to pop out. Otherwise, push that tab and employ a screwdriver to help you. Okay, that's our Weevil Eye.